How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Monday here on the show, we got a lot to talk about here today. It is a brand new week, and man, there's going to be some excitement this week. I'll tell you about that later on. But anyway, we got a lot to get into today because uh, the weekend was very, very busy. Where to begin? I'll actually go to my own tweet about what I had listed for this show here today. Because as some of you are well aware, I mean, I'm a professional, and I got plans and that sort of thing. But once this show is live, the show is just live. Where do you, the loyal listeners, want to go? Well, let's see. We've got Raw tonight. SmackDown Friday, WWE pay-per-view is coming Sunday, Rampage from Friday night, Wednesday's AW Dynamite, I went to Defy Live for Filthy Tom and John Moxley, I watched the semifinals, the finals, the main event, and the Izumi match on the Stardom Show, I watched the top matches from Dontaku. We've got the lineup for the Super Juniors. We have got the upcoming New Japan show with Jay White challenging for the title. And uh, there's a triple mania I saw zero of, but Dave apparently really liked it. So, man, a lot to get into here today. And uh, we'll just start wherever you want to start. And uh, whatever we don't get to, we can, we can talk about later. I should note that uh, Filthy Tom and I are going to be up at 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern, and we will be discussing... Oh, I forgot New Japan Strong. I watched that show as well. We'll talk New Japan Strong, we'll talk SmackDown, and we will talk Stardom. So you'll have an hour of that at 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. If you want to watch live, video.f4wonline.com. If you want to uh, listen to the podcast, wrestlingobserver.com, of course, has all of the podcasts. So a lot to get into. If you want, text us your ideas, 425-780-7566. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Looks like everyone wants to talk about Juice. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Juice Juice is back with New Japan, everybody. He debuted as a uh, member of the Bullet Club, or he returned. And this chat is absolutely hilarious today. <laughs> oh, why is that? Brian got worked. Really? Brian, Did we now? Brian, Brian, yeah. Brian. Yeah. Do you know how... Do you guys, you That's know, all you. You guys know Fauntleroy? <laughs> I've heard of you him. You guys know Fauntleroy? Yeah. Yeah. You know why Fauntleroy exists? Why? Because of a line somebody on the chat used one time when they were like, uh, uh, read the transcript. <laughs> I was like, the transcript? <laughs> I'm going to go back and read a transcript of the of the Twitch chat. And then that, you know, then it turned out I actually did have a guy, old Fauntleroy. But uh, Told you he was in a lot better mood than people thought he was. Who are you talking about? Juice Robinson. Bro, you want to go back and read the text you sent me? What do you mean? Anyway. It no, is, yeah, it, I would. What are you talking funny, about? It's funny, the, uh, the short, <laughs> short memory of the... What uh, are you talking about? Short memory of the uh, folks here on Twitch who, oh, they knew all along, but Brian got worked. <laughs> hey, listen, I don't know what happened with Juice Robinson, okay? Juice Robinson said that his deal but was But you up. are taking it personally. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm pointing out what everyone's freaking out about on the chat here today. Listen, he said that he, his contract was up on April 30th, and I'm sure it was. And he sounded like he was just going to take a break. And listen, I realize he showed up, and I know all of you think that he was just working that entire interview. I don't know if he was or not. Because I don't know if you heard the interview, but there was a reason that Juice was on the show, and the reason was to promote an event coming up, and he proceeded to not promote the event at all and talk about how he didn't want to wrestle anybody in New Japan. So it is possible, it is possible that that was not a worked interview, but that he didn't know what his future was, and his deal was up on April 30th, and in between the interview and... And the show uh, this weekend, he re-signed. I don't know what happened. He said he was not going to wrestle under the New Japan banner anymore. And you he know did. how those bullet guys look at things. So, you know, there you go. Yeah. Bullet I mean, club for life now. Wh- what do you want me to do? I'm not mad. I interviewed the guy, and that's what he said. Are you angry? No. Okay. Not at all. The funny thing is everyone expects me to be angry or humiliated that he said that he was done and then he wasn't. You shame, bro. Oh, how humiliating that I interviewed a guy and he said one thing and then did another. 
a wrestler. A wrestler of all people. Can you believe it? Holy smokes, I should quit this job. (laughs) Uh, Next thing you're going to tell me that, uh, boy, there's a lot I could talk about from this weekend. Hey, you know what's funny, by the way? Speaking of getting worked, and I don't even know know who worked who here, okay? But uh, about two weeks ago, I got I got word. Uh, it was on a Friday, actually, that uh, the ex- NXT cuts were expected. This was about two weeks ago, and uh, the day came and went, and there were no cuts. And then I, I totally forgot about it after that. And then uh, all of a sudden, uh, two weeks later, they cut like ten people. And there's a lot of funny. I mean, the story's sad. The people that lost their jobs and everything like that. But the actual story, there's some kind of funny stuff about it. So uh, when they cut folks, uh, old Johnny L., John Laurinaitis, he sends out an email and he alerts everybody as to who has been cut. Okay. So, uh, so on Friday, I think the cuts occurred like right around the end of the show because I just started getting names right as our show ended. And I, I shortly thereafter got a list of, of names. And at that point, about uh, six or seven people had been cut, and there were about ten names on the list. And I know that people get really mad, like, oh, isn't your job to report those names that haven't been reported yet? Dude, I don't know if it's my job or not, but, like, can you let them be alerted before it shows up on the Internet? Because that's all people complain about is, I found out I was cut on the internet before I was actually told. So no, I don't care if I'm a bad journalist. I'm not going to throw the names before they're actually alerted that they've been cut. But the funny thing is, I don't know if it's funny or not, but... So I got the list of, of, uh, it was like 10 names or whatever. And then, you know, a few hours later, there were 10 names that came out that had been cut. And I don't know why I thought about doing it, but I thought I was going to match them up. So, and actually, I know why, because the list that I got didn't, Dexter Loomis wasn't on the list. And then later, you know, they, there's all these people, oh, Dexter's been cut, what are they going to do? I was like, Dexter's cut? He wasn't on the list I got. And so I, I just went to match up the names, because there were 10 on my list and 10 on the other list or whatever. And, uh, and in fact, the list that I received did not have Dexter Loomis, but it had another name who I'm not going to mention, who was listed as being cut, and then they weren't cut. So the point of all of this is, these blokes have no idea what's going on. And, you know, you can you can see that they knew in advance that Harlan was, was going to be out of here, because one day Harlan just, he vanished. He vanished off the face of the earth. And uh, and then later it turns out he was cut. So they clearly knew about Harlan, but uh, but then on Friday, you know, I, I guess that everybody was like on a lunch break or whatever. And then like during the lunch break, a bunch of blokes got cut, and uh, and there were people there that were completely caught off guard because they've been writing storylines, including long term storylines. With folks that all of a sudden, the next thing they know, they're gone. They weren't they weren't alerted in advance at all. So now, you know, the best one is they cut Persia Parada, and they cut Dexter. Okay, Dexter was married to Indy, and Persia was married or dating or whatever to Duke Hudson. So now, Duke's girlfriend has been cut. Indy's husband has been cut. And so now there was no storyline. They couldn't even do a storyline where, like, Dexter and Persia eloped. They, like, ran off or whatever. I guess they could still say that on television. Yeah. But, uh, man, it's just another one of those things where, you know, you you hear about certain people. And I, I won't mention names. It might be out. It might not. But folks that were cut that were like, thank God. I hated this place. I'm so happy to be gone. You know, I think fans are like, oh, it's so horrible. Trust me, there are people cut that are overjoyed that they're finally out of that place. And, you know, this is one of those reasons why there's no respect paid for these people in in NXT. It's like they're not alerted. The creative team now just has to figure out what to do because they cut these people. I told you this six, seven, eight months ago that the new thing is 
you're hired, and every six months there's going to be a, an evaluation or whatever, and if they feel you're not getting better, they're going to cut you. And there's no warning for the most part. It's just, oh, eh, it's been six months. Eh, this guy ain't getting any better. He's out of here. Uh, she's not getting any better. Out of here. And then it all falls upon creative to try and figure out what to do now with this redheaded stepchild of a television show, which is apropos, by the way, because there's so many damn colors on this show. <laughs> but, yeah, now they got to deal with all of this and... Uh, you know, away well, we the go. churn and burn, you know, you can debate whether that's a, a smart mentality to have. But at least if you know you're coming up on that six months and you're not bullish on somebody, why are they a part of a storyline? <laughs> you know, Stokely Hathaway or, you know, Malcolm Bivens, you had time to write him out and you really didn't do that. But even him you know, pales in comparison to what they've done now with, with the deal with Indy and Dexter and, and, and Persia and Duke Hudson. So now I assume it's going to be Indy and the Duke are together from this point forward. I mean, I guess. I think you should do my storyline where they eloped. They just yeah. both ran off. They just both, yeah, ran off. I mean, Dexter's we, kind of weird anyway. It's what they do. I mean, in storyline, Persia and Duke were together before, so this all works yeah. out. Yeah. So anyway, uh, it's the usual, you know, oh, you know, plans change, cop out, blah, blah, blah. I'll never forget that line. Plans change is a cop out. Well, mm -hmm. here we are again. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Sam Shaw already back out on his feet. See Dude, this? Sam Shaw was in the middle of painting a portrait. Of, that was a shoot. He was painting a portrait of Vince McMahon when he found out he was fired. Yes, which you can see up on his Twitter that... Uh, I assume now has been renamed. No, it's still at Dexter Loomis. I guess he hasn't gone through that process yet. But already back out on the Indies, June 24th, ARW in Melbourne, Florida. So Sam Shaw returns to ARW after, I guess, however many years he was in NXT for. Man, I watched that. I watched a lot of wrestling this weekend, and it was just like one, one after another. There's John Moxley having this awesome match with Filthy Tom. A guy who just couldn't wait to get out of WWE, and then I'm watching New Japan Strong, and the former Gren Metalik is is there as uh, as Mascara Dorada, and holy smokes, this guy was awesome. <laughs> and uh, there, the ones the ones who are good are all going to be fine. And yeah. uh, you know, absolutely, the ones the ones that get fired and do nothing, they were never going to make it. That's pretty much yeah. the way that it is. Look at these indies right now. You know, that's the ROH is going to be again. That's going to be interesting to see how that what ripple effect that decides to play upon the indies once that thing gets going. But look at all these indies out here, you know, Defy, the show that you went to. You know, you didn't even mention the GCW had a couple of shows as well as, you know, other shows all over the place. And the more people are released, the more it can actually help the indie scene. So if you can go, there are people out there that will pay you and put you in matches to see you go. This person here says, did Tom need a transfusion? Believe it or not, so the the match the match ends, and uh, Tom goes to the back, and, and Moxley does a promo. And so I'm sitting there watching Moxley's promo. So Tom apparently went to the, uh, there's a bathroom in the back, obviously. What a friend you are. I wanted to hear the promo. So uh, after the promo's over, I, I headed to the back, and Tom's nowhere to be seen. And turns out he'd, he'd, he was in the bathroom cleaning up, and about... Uh, by the way, there's a there's a white wall in the back where they do interviews right backstage in Jim Valley interviews, guys. There's a huge freaking blood stain like this big on this wall. But anyway, so uh, Tom Venture comes out of the bathroom and he looks good as new. Like he's got a Band-Aid here and that was it. So uh, cleaned up very well, but it took him so long to clean up that the people who were supposed to drive him to the airport for his flight 90 minutes later left. Oh, man. So guess who's a great friend? Oh, yeah, who? Yeah, you're looking at him. Yeah. I How much raced, did you charge him? I raced Filthy Tom to the airport, yeah. dropped him off so he wouldn't miss his flight to get to... Uh, to How go much did get you his charge him a mile? Smashed by poor Davey Richards. Oh, by the way, yeah, you see... No, actually, you know, I didn't charge him by the mile, but I'm going to tell you... I'll, I'm not going to tell you here. you got to tune into the Filthy Show to find out what happened. <laughs> Boy, no good deed goes unpunished. I can tell you that much. The That's ooze a, a teaser bit in your for car. you. <laughs> oh, bro, it was worse than oozing. I'll tell you what happened. Well, that thing got busted open against Davey Richards on Sunday, but uh, he uh, fortunately 
came out on top, so still the BLP Midwest champion. So longest reigning one of all time. That's what Tom does. Yeah, he is. But you know what? Moxie's the linear BLP Midwest champion, the linear New Japan Strong Openweight champion. You know, thank God I Anything became his missing? his linear best friend and you, you know ain't his virtual linear tag best team friend. partner. Compared to you, I absolutely no, am. bro. Listen, there's they're saying nice. You have things. run down that guy so much. Oh, Davey's no, gonna kick his rear end. No, I, I've been there's way back words with Davey. saying nice things and kissing up to people because they're famous. Oh no, and there's no, actually no. being a friend. You got a lot of I nerve, am. pal. Just because look, you have never looked at him the same way after he threw up all over your floor and couch. Dude, I started teaming with him on the indies. I got him over after he. Yeah, threw up you on did my couch. that so you could actually siphon some money for him, so you could pay back on the couch. Best of the Super Terrible Juniors person. tournament. Uh, a lot of names here. Uh, one of the most interesting names, in fact, is Wheeler Yuta. And I was just literally talking to somebody this weekend about the idea of getting Wheeler Yuta in the Best of the Super Juniors because. This guy's in the Blackpool Combat Club, and there's no better way for this guy to take Did they take read your a... mind? No, they didn't. But, uh, I mean, it was obvious he should be in there. But uh, the issue well, was that in order for him to be in Best of the Super Juniors, he can't work the AEW pay-per-view. And so that was the question. Like, obviously, what's best for Wheeler Yuta? A one night showing up at the Double or Nothing? Or working Best of the Super Juniors with... Taguchi, Takahashi, Yo, Taiji Shimori, Clark Connors. I mean, the list goes on and on. But it would require him missing a big date for AEW. And Tony Khan apparently decided what's best for Wheeler Yuta is to do the best of the Super Juniors. And so he's in there. It doesn't matter. He can lose every single match. It doesn't matter. But he's going to go there, and he's going to work from May 15th through June 3rd, having a bunch of great matches with good workers, and he's going to come back way better. So I was very happy to see his name in there. Man, street cred. You know, a lot of people say, what's the big deal? Because a lot of people who grew up on cruiserweight wrestling and junior heavyweight wrestling, you know, they know what it means to be a part of the Super Juniors. And, <clears throat> excuse me, this lineup is incredible this year. And granted... We finally have some people back in there. So just, you know, the fact we have an influx of names is really, really nice here. But Alex Zane was a pleasant surprise to see in there, even though he's been on New Japan Strong. Uh, Ace Austin, obviously. Clark Connors. Robbie Eagles. Teton, who I'm a big fan of. So, I mean, you go through these names, L. Lindemann. Yeah, how dare you read the wrong side of the bracket? It's Robbie Eagles and Bushi no, and matter. Doki and saying, Desperado and Phantasmo. Idiot. Can TJP. you actually, you jackass. I was just naming some of the ones from outside who are in there. Now, would you like to run down the brackets? No, I already did that. But anyway, okay. what I would like to say Jesus. also is, hey, did you guys hear Juice Robinson is back? He's back with New Japan? Yeah. Already and worked, and the Good Brothers are going over there, and Jay White's over there, and <laughs> and a number of others have gotten their, their, uh, their work visas. And this will be... The first time that uh, everyone can go over there and not have to quarantine at all. And, uh, you know, at some point we'll, uh, you know, we should get El Fantasmo here on the show because he could probably talk about this for a while. Because this, this bloke was going over a lot. And when you add in all of the times that he had to quarantine... And uh, I think there was there was uh, one I think there was like one time where uh, like a bunch of people got COVID and so it was a quarantine and then stuck in the in the hotel for two more weeks so it was like 28 days in uh, in a tiny little and you guys you know if you've never been to uh, to Japan I don't think these are big luxurious hotel rooms they're tiny and so you know if you add up the number of days of his life that he has spent in quarantine going to and from Japan. I mean, he's probably thrilled. So you're going to see a lot more folks heading over there because, you know, there were a lot of matches people wanted to see with folks from, from AEW, but you couldn't go over there because in order to go over there for one night, you had to quarantine for two weeks to do the one night, which you're going to miss two weeks of AEW television. Who wants to do that anyway? Now you can just go over and come back. And it's obviously 18 hours there and back and everything like that in the show, but that's way easier than two weeks of quarantine. Now, unfortunately, the fans are still not allowed to cheer and boo. So, believe it or not, that's actually been a uh, 
that's been a uh, stumbling block for some of the people that uh, have had the opportunity to perhaps work New Japan. You know, they don't want to go over there if the fans can't cheer and boo. But the funny thing is, like, you know how uh, uh, there was a pandemic? I think you're aware. And they uh, they had to do those empty arena shows. And so there were a whole bunch of things that they started doing differently uh, in the in the pandemic era. And there were a few that I remember thinking, man, you know what? When this pandemic is over, I hope they keep doing that. Well, one of the things that I hope the fans continue to do is their clapping gimmick when they when, uh, when you watch New Japan shows. Because the fans are not allowed to cheer or boo. They're only allowed to clap. So now it's been so long that they're starting to figure out some cool things they can do with their clapping. They, you know, they clap a lot after after every spot that's done. There's like a lot of clapping. So so there's actually more sound from the beginning to the end of a match. But there are no the big cheering and exploding there at the end. That I want back. But they're doing the thing now where like you know they do the strike exchange and the fans go boom and you hear it sounds like a gunshot every time someone throws one of the forearms. So I hope when they're allowed to scream and yell and cheer, they still do the clapping. Because putting those two things together would be an awesome uh, environment for New Japan shows. I wish Toriyama would have watched WrestleMania because he should be the guy that would actually, you know, come up with the idea of breaking out two big, huge hands like they had for Jackass. And he could have them out there. And if the crowd is getting a little bit too quiet during some of the Bullet Club shenanigans or annoyed or something like that, he could start breaking those out and, and, and clap them together. And then maybe he can you know bring you over there and then you could be the guy with the clap. What in God's name are you talking about? Nothing. Go ahead. Move on. All right. Tonight, uh, very quickly, Raw. All we know is there's an appearance by Roman Reigns and the Usos. Why is there an appearance by Roman Reigns and the Usos? Well, they've been building up this title unification match for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks now. And then on SmackDown, they change it to a six man. So obviously the question is, what... Well, star power. I presume the storyline will be the winning six-man team will get all the belts. So if Drew McIntyre pins Jimmy Uso, Drew wins Roman's belt, and uh, Riddle and and uh, Randy Orton are the unified tag team champions. I presume that's what they're doing, but uh, they have not told us what they're doing yet. And they may not know. <laughs> I don't know if you heard the story about the cuts on Friday. Plans change. But uh, that's that. So, yeah, we can talk about uh, SmackDown if you want to. I really don't want to go off on uh, Sami Zayn's match. Darby Allen and Swerve Strickland, Rampage. A lot to get into. We'll continue after the break. Observer Live. This person here is outraged at the idea of all the belts being on the line in a six-man. In theory, Randy could pin Jimmy. Drew gets both world titles from Roman. I know they won't do that, but in storyline, they created a match where it could. Yeah. I don't think they're going to do it at all, but I mean. I mean yeah, I, but do you know they won't do that? I don't think that's a good bet to make. I, I uh, know they're not going to do that. You sure? I'm uh, 99% they're sure. They're crazy people there. I, I 100% expect uh, the Usos to unify the tag team titles. And then if uh, Randy Orton and Riddle are going to chase them, they can chase them. But uh, I don't think Roman's dropping that title in a in a six-man. I mean, not dropping the title one way or the other, much less in a six-man. I would hope not. But, I mean, stranger things have happened. You think, uh, you know, you say 100%. You know people that say, I'm giving 110% or I'm going to give 120%. How do you feel about those people? Do you think Lance is upset with those people for not understanding mathematics? Nope, don't think that at all. Yeah. But mathematically, I could tell you the best match I saw all weekend. What's that? It was not Azumi and Mesa Gura, but that match was awesome. Mesa High speed, baby. Uh, Tanahashi and Ishii. Oh, my God. This match was so <laughs> awesome. This match was a thousand stars. And <laughs> You think you may be overrating dude, it a smidge? No, I'm not. It was a thousand stars. <laughs> These two guys are the greatest. They're the absolute greatest. And I was true. In just, one case, it's very arguable. I was just talking the other day about that it was it was a Shi'i 
And, and, they, and then Adam they Cole. said, they heard you and said, we're going to have the best match for Brian. No, it was a she and Adam Cole. And I was trying to explain what I was trying to explain. And I just couldn't explain it. It's like, is she, whenever he wrestles anybody, it's like, I don't know. But the he, point of this is. He melds into their match? Well, it's like, there there is an Ishii match, but but he will have the other person's match. The Adam Cole match was totally an Adam Cole match, but it was also an Ishii match. I, I don't even know how to explain it, but it's he's like. He's going to let you shine as much as you're going to let him shine, and he's going to work your style of match well, as much as vice versa. Whereas a Tanahashi Nakamura ex- flair. I know how to explain it. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So uh, there's. Uh, I, here's a good one. Remember that Ric Flair Rey Mysterio match from a long time ago? Dude, At that match pool? was bizarre. It was Ric Flair versus Rey Mysterio in a Nitro. And it was like a Styles clash, and it was just like totally weird. So there's a Styles clash, and then there's a match where it would be like uh, uh, Zack Saber Jr. I'm trying to think of a great example. Zack Saber Jr. versus um, actually Okada is a good one because Okada always works the other guy's style of match. So if you do a Zack Saber Jr versus Okada match, it's going to be a... It, like, Okada's going to work a Zack Sabre Jr. match with Zack Sabre Jr. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, Ishii totally worked an Adam Cole match with Adam Cole, but he also... It was absolutely an Ishii match as well. It's like... It's, it's, it's usually one or the other. I guess that's what I'm trying to point at. It's usually one or the other. It's a Brian match or it's a Mike match. It's a Brian match or it's a Mike match. With Ishii, he managed to do... An Adam Cole match, but it was also simultaneously an Ishii match. So anyway, I was just marveling about this. I didn't even know how to put it into words. So then, it's Tanahashi and Ishii, okay? And, uh, you know, Tanahashi and Ishii do not work the same style of match. They're very different workers. Tanahashi is, uh, you know, if you've never seen a lot of Tanahashi, it's like a Shawn Michaels. It's a professional wrestling uh old school work with some cool stuff and he's so smooth and it all looks great and then there's a Shii who's like a fire hydrant and uh he just hits you as hard as he can and uh you hit him and he doesn't sell it and then he does so anyway that's what you're gonna get with these two guys so what happened here is it was not a Tanahashi match it was not a Shii match it was not Tanahashi wor- working a Shii's match or a Shii working Tanahashi's match it was is she working as Tanahashi and Tanahashi working as is she? They switched places <laughs> and then they did their match together. I'm punching the mic. I'm so excited. So like I'm watching this match and it's just they always there's always a spot where like the guy he, he hits a she and he hits a, and she goes back and he goes back and he goes back and all of a sudden he just stops selling and he goes ah and then he fires up and he starts hitting the other guy. They do that in every single Ishii match. This time, Ishii is pounding Tanahashi. And he's and Tanahashi's going back to the road. And all of a sudden, Tanahashi gets in the corner. And then Tanahashi goes, ah! And he starts firing up. And Ishii's, he, Ishii's getting knocked back. He's getting knocked back. He's getting The place is going crazy. And then Ishii gets knocked all the way back to the corner. And then Tanahashi hits him with one shot. And then Ishii suddenly... It's like a cartoon. You ever seen the cartoon? Actually, we, we did in Paper Bag Bandit as well. Where, you know... Uh, uh, whoever the the little guy's getting chased by the big guy, and all of a sudden the little guy stops. He's like, "I'm gonna chase you!" And then he starts chasing the big guy. The guy's like, "Ah!" And he starts running away from the little guy, and is like totally backwards. And then all of a sudden, like the big guy realizes, "Wait a second, what am I running from this little geek for?" And then he goes after the little guy again. It's old school cartoon stuff. Well. Hunt Tanashi pummels Ishii all the way into the corner, and is she's selling, and it's like the, the script has been flipped, and all of a sudden he hits one more, and she's like, What am I doing? I'm a she! And he stops selling, and he just does a face. And all of a sudden the crowd's like, Oh, but they can't say anything. You know, they can't chat, chant, You effed up. They just have to go like, <laughs> You effed up, whatever. And then Tanashi. Like, he's like, uh-oh, what have I done? And as she starts pounding him back to the corner again, I'm dying watching this match. And then, like, they're doing the near falls at the end, and all of a sudden, Ishii whips out 
The Sling Blade! Is she? And Tanashi takes his big bump for the Sling Blade. I'm like, oh my god. And then, you know, he hits a big brain buster. Everybody thinks it's over and Tanahashi kicks out. And then Tanahashi grabs a she, and Tanahashi lifts him up, and boom! He brain busters a she on his head. I love this match with all of my all of my being. And you know, I am the first guy. I am the first guy that complains. Why are these matches so long? Why does every match have to go 40 minutes? I'm sick of it. Like. Go 18 to 23 or whatever and get in and get out. You don't need to always go so long. This match goes 23 minutes. And if I hate these stupid chants like fight forever. But, bro, if ever there was a match that I was hoping these two dudes would just fight forever and just go 40 minutes for once. This is a match that needs to go 40 minutes. And they stopped at 23. I was appalled. Gah. No, man. Make this you match want more. was so awesome. So <laughs> awesome. Hey, make you want more. That's what the G1's about. Then they give you 30. You know what I mean? They, they could do it if they wanted to. How do you make a result that's really not in, in doubt? How do you make it special? How do you make it different? How do you give the people something for them to sink their teeth into? Because I think everybody thought Tanahashi was going to walk out of there with the win. And he did. But how do they do it? They do it in the way that Brian said. And this will be shocking for some people who have been under a rock for a long time or just don't view anything outside of the states but hiroshi tanahashi is arguably the greatest pro wrestler of all time he's one of he's he's no doubt one of the greatest baby faces to ever walk the face of the earth and in this modern era i would put him up against anybody and as long as his body is is willing and is able to help him out his brain will carry him forever he can walk out there like jimmy valiant now and just walk out strum the the invisible guitar the air guitar and people will lose their minds for the next 30 years he's amazing i don't know if she is going to hold up that long but frankly the fact that he's in the position he's in after all of those years you know, New Japan's done a lot of things that drive me nuts. Hey, look at all the titles right now. Pretty much are tied up with something that's got to do with the Bullet Club or something that's got to do with the House of Torture. But one thing they've been able to do is keep their stars as stars, and they make sure up and down the roster there is a depth and there is credibility. You know, I, I think that uh, the highest praise that I could give this match, if I have not praised it enough, is I think this is now the number one match I may have ever seen where if you have somebody that does not watch wrestling, okay, and and they are they are willing, I mean, if they're like a pacifist, they don't like violence, I mean, don't show them this match. But if they're willing to see a confrontation between two men, a battle, if they're willing to watch that, this may be, like, I can't imagine anybody who is willing to watch two people confront each other that would not absolutely love this match there's no blood there's no like excessive violence or anything like that it's just a battle of wills and it's got like you know if if it's your wife old tanahashi's handsome man and then you know if if you're uh if it's your your whoever uh, she there's no one tougher than she i mean it's everything you could want you get your everything legends, you could want in yeah. life an underdog God. yeah i Look, feel like it's... showing it to my wife like i bet you anything if i showed my <laughs> wife who watches no wrestling hates wrestling wants nothing to do with wrestling i'll bet if i showed her this match by the end she'd be like dude that was awesome it was so great. This is your Rocky Four, Brian. Dude. I feel it. You feel like running up them steps right now, don't I, you? I feel like just letting you finish the show and I'll go watch the damn match again. Man, look at that. We're going to get up. Man, if you go out, make a montage right now with you thinking about this match. The match just you know flickering in your eye with you getting ready. The music behind you. Maybe the, the music that was playing all of Friday during that one segment when, when we were trying to get a show done. That type of music there. Inspiration. The great inspiration that is Tanahashi and she. So this person says, how much do you have to know about the two characters and their shtick to get the match? Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Zero! No, no. Nothing! He, he, no, no. Here, he, listen. Okay. If you know... Tanahashi and Ishii. It helps. And and everything. It'll be like multitudes better, okay? Sure. But 
You don't need to know nothing exactly about either of them. It's wrestling to it's get great the story wrestling. of this match. Jack because, Briscoe, Dory Funk. You know the, the story. Obviously, is is that uh, you know she is just the toughest guy, and uh, and you know they do the whole whatever. But you don't need to know anything about Ishii to look, look at Tanahashi, look at Ishii. The story's told. <laughs> like if you look at them, and they you already the understand story. the character they're going to play. They tell the story with how they work, and they tell the story again. When if you understand the story, some of the things they're doing to each other then stand out more. Then they mean more. But it doesn't matter if you had never seen Owen and Brett before. You saw what FTR was doing to each other and thought that was kind of cool. For the people that knew, it was extra special. That's what makes Tanahashi just great he is the best and take any match of his almost against anybody his top tier matches omega nakamura you name the opponent and present it to somebody who's never seen them before it, it, it it's almost undeniable how is anybody not going to come out of that a fan of hiroshi tanahashi he is the ultimate pro wrestler and yes everybody i'll talk about starting with tom leave me alone <laughs> me but I will say that the Azumi pay for that man stitches here. May Saruga match was awesome. It was the best match on the show, and they did the greatest referee spot I ever saw. And it was impossible to make it work, but they did. So uh, you need to watch that match above anything else on that show that I saw. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I talked a lot of wrestling. I want to mention quickly, if you go to my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez, Whale Scout, Give Big Day, coming up over the next couple of days. And if you head to my Twitter, there's all the information about how you can make a donation. And uh, what's interesting this time is if you uh, if you click on it here, if I can find it, it actually takes you to a page where you can uh, you can see exactly where your money is going. So, uh, for example, here, if you want to, uh, now of course I can't find it. But anyway, uh, if you want to donate to uh, help with a summer intern, if you want to uh, donate to, uh, there you go, hit the donate button. $100 will buy 20 native plants, uh, $50 a full set of naturalist materials, 150 bucks outreach with 10 low-income families, 200 bucks buys you 10 cubic yards of mulch, uh, 500 helps pay for the Diverse Voices Internship Program, and uh, and a lot more. So you can actually see what... Uh, your money is going to, but give big days How coming much up. do I have to donate to buy an intern? Do you have to buy your own intern? That's on you, brother. I mean, you can pay for a Whale Scout intern to do Whale Scout work, but if you want your own Fauntleroy... How is there a definition, like, exact of what Whale Scout work actually is? Um, if you get said intern to come over? Well, what the interns will be doing is... Uh, we have we have several sites in which habitat restoration is being done. So the interns, they're uh, they're planting. Uh, yeah. Then they have to tend to the plants. They have to do water quality work. They've got to uh, spread mulch. They've got to come and water the plants during the summer. There's a lot of things they end up doing. So hmm. uh, that's it. So anyway, check it out my Twitter at Brian Alvarez. I wish I could tell you more, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I talked to my wife about that. But uh, it's up there. WAGives.org. Support Whale Scout on Washington Gives. So we appreciate all your support. And we may have some more fun stuff coming up for Give Big Day in the next couple of days. So Uh-oh. don't miss this show. And uh, also, don't miss Filthy Four Daily, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern, WrestlingObserver.com or Video.F4WOnline.com. Thanks, everybody, for listening here today. We'll talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.